Happy Sabbath. Happy day. Praise God. Praise God again. Yes, I am Janelle Nyamuita Nyamiaka, a student at Miri Hill Girls Kiambu, and I go to church at Starehe SDA Church. I am very privileged to be here today, and I thank God for this opportunity, and I thank Pastor for allowing me to speak here today, and it is my prayer that as I speak, someone may leave this place with something and it may touch someone's heart. Let us pray. Mighty everlasting Father in heaven, we come before your throne of mercy and we say thank you. Lord, I ask that as I'm going to speak, give me the confidence to talk to your people and may they learn from me. It's my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. I have been told this whole pulpit is mine. I will use it to my fullest. Yes. So, as a kid growing up, in the children ministry, I used to sing a song that tells me, We Jesus in the vessel, we can smile at the storm. Smile at the storm, smile at the storm. We Jesus in the vessel, we can smile at the storm. As we are sailing home. Thank you. And then I grew up. Kidogo, at around 10 years, I had a song that tells me, Till the storm passes over, till the thunder sounds no more, till the clouds roll forever from the sky. Hold me fast. Let me stand in the hollow of thy hand. Keep me safe till the storm passes by. And then after that, like two years later, I was around 10. Then two years later, I came across a song that tells me that I didn't know how much he loves me until I passed through that storm and looked back. I didn't know Jesus was all that I needed until he was all that I had. I will use stories to give examples so that the children can also relate to my sermon. Yes, so that when they go home and their mom is like, what did you learn in church? They're like, okay, Janelle said this. Yes, so I have a mother. I think she's somewhere in the congregation. And my mom taught us how to bake at around 10, 9. And it was a very exciting thing, you know, I can bake. It's an achievement. And I have a brother who could come together. And after one week of knowing that we can now bake alone, it was so exciting. And we will go and bake any time we want. But with time, it got, I don't know, tiresome. We got lazy. It didn't make any sense anymore. It, it became a norm. Baking is a normal thing. And that is how Christianity is. When you are a fresh Christian, you're very excited about the word. You're very excited of doing great things out here. You're very excited of spreading the word of God. But if you don't have Christ, with time, you tend to get tired. You tend to fall. You tend to go through those storms without Christ and you stumble. You tend to go through trials that will make you want to give up in life. Yes. So I will officially start my sermon. The theme of today is get involved. Get involved. And my topic is Jesus in the mix. The theme is get involved and my topic is Jesus in the mix. Our reading of today was from the book of Job, chapter 1 and verse 8. And the Bible says, And the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my man's servant Job? There is none like him on earth, and blameless and upright man who fears God and turns away from evil. I am going to use three characters from the Bible. That is Job, Daniel, and Jesus himself. As a Christian, I will not lie, being a Christian without Jesus is very hard. 
my mom taught me how to bake. I told you that my mom taught me how to bake. And as she tells you, you put eggs, you put flour, you put this, you put that. Without flour, you can't have that cake. Am I right? Yes. Bile yunga, wisiting in is a yukiki. And that's the thing. As a Christian without Christ, you will not be perfect. You will not have the confidence to do his word. You will not have the confidence to go in courage and talk to people about the work of God. And that is why I really admire Daniel in the Bible. I was once in charge of voice of prophecy at school and we used to go through the book of Daniel and Bob used to guide us every day. And one day he came and he prayed and said, God help us not to be obese Christians. And I was wondering, what is Bob telling God? Help us not to be obese Christians. And at the end of the prayer, he said, learn not to be an obese Christian. Whereby you just eat the word and keep it to yourself. The Bible in Matthew chapter 28 verse 19, the first part before that comma, Christ tells us, go and make disciples in my name. It is a command and not a request. He's telling you, my daughter, my son, go and make disciples in my name. And he's giving you the confidence. And my question is, why don't you want to get involved? Why don't you want to be in the ministry of Christ? Um, I tend to understand that people will say, okay, most teenagers, if I'm not wrong, say that, Mimi, nitaoko ka nikisha zeka kidogo, nijua nikisha maliza high school, nimepata raha za maisha, nitaanza kuokoka. Kwa sababu, you have that fear of, I will lose friends, I will get embarrassed, I will... I will go through many things that I am not ready to go through. I will face trials that I am not confident enough to face. But 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, the Bible tells us that God cannot give you a temptation that he knows you're not able to handle. You're afraid of the embarrassment. Romans chapter, 11, chapter 10, verse 11, God tells you that nobody who believes in the Lord shall be put to shame. Be confident enough. Get involved in the work of Christ. People will say that being involved Involved in the work of Christ is all a matter of the three angels' messages and telling people that Revelation says, Fear God and give him glory for the hour of judgment has come, or telling people that fallen, fallen is Babylon the Great. It's not a matter of telling people the three angels' messages. Yes, you're an Adventist, spread the message. But that one verse, singing to someone that one hymn, or giving, inviting someone to church on that one Sabbath can make a great difference, can make an impact in someone's life. Walk with the armor of Christ in you. Walk, Ephesians chapter 6 tells us to walk with the armor of Christ. Like, walk with Christ's logo on you. The same way I am a student at Mary Hill, you can read my badge written, Mary Hill Girls. It's the same way you as a Christian, you as a child of God, should be confident enough to wear that armor of Christ and be like, I am a child of God. Be confident enough to walk in God's way. Let us look at Job. I told you we're going to talk about three characters, Job, Daniel, and Jesus. Job was a man after God's own heart. Job was a very wealthy man. By wealthy, I mean very wealthy. He had everything. I mean, he had children, he had flock and everything. But one day, the devil was like, you know what? Let me go tempt someone. And God asks him, um, what are you doing? And then the devil is like, I, I don't really have someone to tempt. And God asks him, have you tried my man's servant, Job? And Job goes through trials and he loses everything. And his wife and friends come and tell him, you know what, Job? Okay, God gave you these things and he has taken them away from you. Just curse God and let go. Curse God and let go of all this. But Job stands up to Christ. Job stands up and tells them, no, it is God who gave me this life. He will take it away from me. And he stands for Christ up to the end. And at the end of it all, God comes and adds him more than he had before. Well, that is, that is what being a Christian is. You will face through these trials. It's not that there is not a reward. Revelation chapter 24 verse 12, God tells us that I will come again, my reward is with me, to give to everyone according to his work. The work that you are going to do for Christ 
will, mat- will determine the amount of stars you will be having on that crowd. As a kid in PowerPoint, I used to be told that when you, when you invite a friend to church, when you, when you bring someone close to God, a star is put on your crown. And I get so excited. I want to have a, star with, a, a crown with very many cr- stars. And that is what you ought to do. You have to have that goal, have that ambition. The same way you will see something very new trending and you will call everyone to come and see. The same way you will achieve something minor and you want the whole world to know. It's the same way you should be able to involve yourself in the work of Christ and testify of God, good, God's goodness in your life. Be confident like Job was. And I promise you, my brother and sister, God will not take it away from you. He will add on to what you had before. He will multiply like he did to Job. Let us go to Daniel. Daniel was, Daniel was a young man. He had friends. And him and his friends went through a lot of things. They changed their names. They, they were told to worship the idols. They went through all these things. But they, 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 they were even told to like, they were gi- given food, a whole table of meat and everything. And they said they wanted veggies and all that stuff. And they took water. And at the end of it all, things were seven times hotter, but they were ten times better. And it was through Christ that they were ten times better. For Daniel to go to his window every day and pray three times a day, for him to refuse to bow down to an idol and stay in the den of lions, it was through God's grace. It's because he had Jesus in the mix. It's because he had God in him. It's because he asked for God's guidance and because he had an intention in his mind that he was going to work for God. It is up to you as a Christian to have that intention in your mind that you're going to work for Christ. You're going to work for God and you ask him to guide you and you talk to him. And don't be embarrassed about him because when you fight for him, he will fight for you. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 4 tells you that for you are precious and loved before my eyes, I will give men in exchange for you and humans in exchange for your life. And that is what God is willing to do. You are willing to spread his word. He is willing to fight for you. He tells us in Joshua chapter 1 verse 9, have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. That is how you should be. Strong and of good courage and stand for Christ and stand for God and do not be shaken. These temptations in life are very great. They are very big. And you will go through very many things. You will lose friends. You will lose family, maybe. I don't know. But one thing is that if you stand for Christ, he will be there for you. And if you also decide not to work for him, he will humble you. He will bring you down and tell you, you know what, my daughter? You know what, my son? You have to work for me. He will humble you. Let us look at... King Jezebel. King Jezebel was during the time of, was it King? Sorry. Um, the King Darius. King Darius was during the time of Daniel. And in Daniel chapter 4 verse 35 is when we see God humble the kings of Israel. That was King Nebuchadnezzar who went to eat grass. And he Um, after, After putting Daniel and his friends through all this trouble, after making them go and suffer through all these things, God decides to humble him. God makes him hit grass to a point that he confesses that the Lord is God. So my brothers and sisters, do not be afraid of the word. Because once you decide to let go of God, because he has put you into temptations, because he has, he has, you feel like he has, he's not holding your hand, you feel like he doesn't really care. It's not that he cares. He cares. That's why Psalm 181, when you ask, does Jesus care? It tells you that, oh, yes, he cares. And I know he cares. And make it visible. Be proud to be a Christian. Be proud to get involved. Be proud to work for him. Have him in the mix. And Make it visible that he lives. And that's why I chose song 251. Make him live in your heart. He lives, he lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and he talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives. Salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. 
And because he lives within your heart, be proud of that. Make it your purpose to share that he lives within your heart. Make it your purpose to work for him. Make it your purpose to stand out. When he chooses you, be proud. Be a proud daughter. When he says that you're going to do this, listen to him and accept. Let us look at Jesus. Jesus was the son of God. And him being the son of God did not make him not share the word. Him being the son of God did not make him command people and just sit down. Jesus gave us instructions and he led by example. He was the son of God, yes. But he himself walked miles and miles each and every day talking about his father, telling people about his father, spreading his father's word until the day he died because he was the son of God and he was willing to do that. You as a child of God, you should be willing and ready to do that as well. Because even Jesus himself faced trials, even Jesus himself went through all these things that you feel as if God is not standing by your side, but leave your cup to God and ask him today, tell him, Father, I need your help. Father, I need your grace. I need you to walk with me through this journey. I'd like to appreciate all those who have sacrificed to be baptized. Baptism is a great decision, but it's a very big decision. You'll be baptized day one. You're very happy and confident about yourself. You wake up that morning. Remember that your pathfinder, the Lord, tells you that you should keep the morning watch and you will read your Bible, do your devotion that morning. But with time, you will feel like it's getting tiresome. If you don't have Jesus in that mix, if he's not in that combination, it's going to be tough. This, Satan will take every opportunity, every little opportunity that he gets. If it's Vespas that you want to attend and you are done with high school, he will ensure that a friend has a party. He will ensure that something comes your way and blocks you. Being baptized requires a lot of confidence, and that is what you have done today. You have shown your confidence. And even as you decide to accept Christ today, it is my prayer that as you work for him, you may have that strength. You may ask him to guide you in everything that you do before you lose yourself, because losing yourself is very easy, and that will make Satan happy, and it will make Jesus sad. And I don't think God will be happy if he loses you after you have offered yourself to him. So it is my prayer that every day you decide, you ask God for his grace, you ask God for his power. And once you find it difficult, once you find it tough, brothers and sisters, to go before Christ, to ask him for strength, just seeing, um, asking God is not a matter of going to pray every day. You can just go to him and sing. I love song 331 that tells me that Jesus, thou hast promised to all who follow thee that where thou art in glory, there shall thy servant be. And Jesus, I have promised to serve thee to the end. So give me grace to follow my master and my friend. And following your master and your friend requires his grace. That is why that third stanza tells you that. God, give me grace to follow my master and my friend. When it gets tough, Go to him and ask him to give you grace to follow him as your master and your friend. And it is my prayer this day, it is my request that you may be proud to work for your master and your friend. You may be proud to walk with him each and every day, walk by his side and ask him to walk by your side. And it is my prayer that God may give us the strength to work for him and spread his word and make him proud every day. Let us pray. Dear Master in heaven, we come before you. We ask for your guidance, O oh Lord. I'm asking, dear God, that may you please give us the strength to work for you. Make us as courageous as Job and Daniel, dear Master. We ask for your guidance, heavenly Lord. And we ask that may you please show us the right way, heavenly Master. And I thank you for your word, Father. And I ask that may you please guide us, Father Lord in heaven, and help us to spread your word, heavenly Master. Forgive us because we are sinners and we are not worthy before your throne. Thank you for everything you've done unto us. It's our prayer in Jesus' name.